Trinity and Reese spent the entire ride to the next pack in silence. She stared out the window, blinking her red eyes and praying to the goddess that it wouldn't be a long visit. How could I be so foolish, she thought. She knew that her feelings toward Reese weren't all her fault. The mate bond helped speed them along. She just didn't understand why the bond wasn't doing anything for him. This pack was as small as Riley's, but they didn't have an alpha. They had a prime beta instead. A prime beta functioned like an alpha, but they never really had the same power over their pack members as the alpha did. A prime beta's mate wasn't even technically a Luna. She helped with the woman and children, but she had no official role in the pack. She was nice enough to Trinity anyway. She smiled as they sat in the dining room while Reese met with the prime beta. How was the Azure River pack? The woman asked. Eventful, Trinity answered dryly. I still have a slight headache. Don't worry about entertaining me. The boy should be done soon enough. Thank you, Trinity said. Honestly, she didn't say much else for the rest of their short visit, or on the drive back to Red Springs, or the rest of the weekend. How could she say anything when all she wanted to do was cry? The only time Trinity smiled was when Vincent picked her up for class on Monday morning. He greeted her with the customary bow, but Trinity couldn't handle being formal with the only other person who knew what happened that weekend. Vincent, thank God as you're here. He smiled so wide that she could see every tooth in his mouth. Thank God as you're still here. We were so worried. I felt awful. Pretty sure I felt worse, she thought. It's not your fault, she said instead. A guard's duty, she cut him off, doesn't outweigh a husband's or a father's. Your family needed you. I'm glad you were there for them. He didn't seem convinced. He started the car, and Trinity relished the thought of being far away from Reese for the next few hours. They hadn't spoken directly since he broke her heart. Again. It was almost worse than the last time. She could be angry back then. Now, she was just sullen. Vincent picked up on it as they got close to school. You seem troubled, Vincent said. Wouldn't you? She sighed. You'd think being kidnapped would be the worst part. What was the worst part? He asked. She shook her head. She didn't want to make Vincent feel any worse. What if he blamed himself for her relationship falling apart? You'd have to be in a relationship for it to fall apart, she reminded herself. Thankfully, they pulled up to her school before Trinity had to answer Vincent's question. Juniper bounced on her feet in the parking lot. She rushed to the door the moment they parked. I can't believe you went to see other packs. Tell me everything. I wish I could. There's not much to tell, Trinity lied. You've seen one pack. She meant to say, then you've seen them all. But the Azure River pack was so much nicer than her home pack had ever been. The woman loved her. The pack welcomed her. And if it hadn't been for that awful kidnapping, then it would have been one of the best nights of her life. Juniper narrowed her eyes at Trinity. Spill it. Trinity ignored her and led the way toward their lecture hall. Vincent trailed them with her books. Trinity hugged her arms around herself for something to hold. Juniper sped up to stop Trinity before they got to the boys. I'm serious, Trin. You seem off. What happened? Trinity tried to smile convincingly. Just a really weird night, but it's over now. You can either tell me alone or tell me in front of Paul and Cedar, but they're going to see right through this act you're doing too. Juniper looked past Trinity to Vincent. You feel it, don't you? Vincent didn't answer, but Trinity saw him nod out of the corner of her eye. How is it possible that her friends could care about her this much, but her own mate couldn't? If they love me, why can't he? New tears sprang to her eyes, and Trinity couldn't stop them. She turned on her heels to run for the bathroom down the hall. Trinity! Juniper and Vincent chased after her. Trinity ducked into a stall to hide from Juniper. Vincent wouldn't come inside of the girls' bathroom. Juniper, on the other hand, squatted down to look at Trinity through the gap between the stall door and the floor. You can't lie to me now. You're crying. It's not even noon, Juniper said. Why does time matter? Trinity asked between sobs. Because it's not new stuff, then. It's stuff you've been stewing about all weekend. If you won't tell me, at least open the door. It's gross down here. 
Trinity unlocked the door so Juniper could step into the stall too. It was a mistake. Now Juniper was even closer and Trinity was trapped with her well-meaning and way too perceptive best friend. Does this have to do with a certain tall and sexy maid of yours? Juniper knew that Trinity and Reese weren't madly in love. But she didn't know how bad things were between them. Trinity didn't really want to admit it either. Drop it. Did he do something this weekend? Juniper asked. Trinity shook her head, but another sob slipped out when she did. Juniper's face tightened in anger. Did he hurt you? Not physically. Junie, please, I can't talk about this. Says who? If your mate is making you cry, then you need to talk about it. He doesn't get to treat you like crap just because he's the alpha. Trinity shushed her. Don't say alpha here. There were humans around. Juniper rolled her eyes. I don't care about them. I care about you. You're my best friend, and I love you. Juniper was one of a handful of people who loved Trinity. One of the only ones who would ever say it and mean it. No man will ever love me, Trinity thought. Not when she was mated to a man that hated her. Trinity sobbed even harder. Juniper pulled Trinity into her arms. It's okay. I got you. Tell me what happened. Trinity sniffed. Only if you promise to let it go after I tell you. But promise me or I won't tell you. Juniper groaned, but Trinity didn't care. She couldn't go over this more than once. This was the most embarrassing, most heartbreaking experience of her life. Juniper finally gave in. Fine, I promise. So Trinity told her everything. She started with Vincent backing out of the trip and went all the way to when Reese asked how anyone could love someone like Trinity. It was honestly kind of amazing to watch Juniper light up about their dance and kiss. It meant Trinity wasn't alone in having hope before Reese ripped it away and tore her to pieces. By the end of the story, Juniper's claws were out. Her teeth bared as she roared. He said what? The stall door shook with the force of her voice. I don't care who he is. I'm going to kick his... No! Trinity clamped her hands around Juniper's arm to focus on her. You'd promise you'd let it go. I've known for weeks that I'm a mate in name only, but I got swept up in the fake mating of it all. I thought maybe he respected me, even if he didn't love me. But I understand now that that's never going to happen. Why not? Juniper whined. Why won't he just give in? I don't know, but he didn't tell you until after you were marked. He tricked you into this. Are you sure it's even a mate bond? Juniper questioned. Trinity bristled at that. Of course I'm sure. I felt it. He feels it too. He just doesn't care. He would rather have nothing than a wolfless girl like me. Juniper growled again. Trinity quickly tried to justify it. It's perfect, actually, because I never really wanted a mate, and now I get all the other benefits without all the problems. Just all the heartache, Juniper sighed. Trinity couldn't argue against that. At least I have you. Juniper yanked Trinity back into the hug. She squeezed her so tightly that it hurt. Just tell me when I get to fight him, okay? Juniper joked. Trinity laughed through her tears. When the girl stepped out of the bathroom, Paul and Cedar scrambled back from the door. It only took one look at their wide eyes filled with pity for Trinity to groan. You were listening in, weren't you? She asked them. Paul scooped her up into a hug immediately. Oh, Astro, he's the worst. I can't believe I ever liked that guy. Yeah, he's not my alpha anymore, Cedar said, joining in the hug. Trinity caught Vincent's eye. He had tears in them. He heard everything, too. He looked as heartbroken as she did. He was in the same position as Noah. As much as he cared about her, his loyalty went to the Alpha before anything else. She offered him a sad smile. Come on, we're missing the whole lecture, Trinity said to her friends. They reluctantly let her go. Can you give us a second? Juniper nodded. We'll save your seat. She led Paul and Cedar back to their lecture hall while Trinity stayed to talk to Vincent. I'm sorry, Luna. So very sorry. Trinity's eyebrows furrowed. You don't have to be sorry for him. No. For me. I should have been there for you. Not just this weekend. The entire time. I should have known what you were going through and done something. She placed a hand on his arm to stop him. 
Hey, how could you have known? She asked. It's my problem. No one else's. You shouldn't have to go through this alone, he told her. If one of my pups ever had to feel the way you do, a protective anger flashed in his eyes. They won't, she said. It wasn't just to comfort him. You would never let that happen. And I'm not alone. You've helped so much, without knowing how. Just keep being my guard and my friend, and tomorrow I'll be stronger. Vincent's chin wobbled sadly. You're too strong already, he said. On the way home, we'll get ice cream, all right? Trinity chuckled in surprise. Ice cream? <laughs> Do I look five to you? My Uncle Eddie has a shop, and his homemade flavors always cheer Heather up. Let me take you, Vincent added. As much as Trinity wanted to say no and stop being a burden to everyone around her, she could see how badly Vincent needed this. Fine, but only one scoop, and we'll take the long way, she said. His eyes lit up. The Alpha won't like that, he said conspiratorially. Perfect. Let him be unhappy for once. Want to know what happens next? Click on the link in the description below to watch further episodes of Chosen by Fate, Rejected by the Alpha.